yeah. Hi guys, so yes, we are recording tonight, just so you know. Um, my name is Catherine Riddell. I'm the assistant director at the Rye Free Reading Room. And uh, we've been working with Ashley now for at least a year. We just love her programs. We love her um, energy. Um, she is a font of knowledge. Check out her website if you're a cooker. And um, thank you, Ashley, for being here. And I'm just gonna turn it right over to you now. Awesome, thank you, Catherine. Um, Hi everybody, I'm gonna pin or spotlight my one video and my overhead, let's see, add spotlight. So you guys can see my cutting board too. I just have a different mat on top of my wood mat. And this is a tip in case you cut a lot of garlic and onions like I do, you might not wanna cut your strawberries on the same board if you have like very sensitive taste buds. Um, I, by the famous story of the time my father-in-law made sangria and he cut things on the same board as all of the Italian things. And I just like, it was, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a little difficult if you really don't want to drink the sangria because it's like <laughs> garlicky. But um, so hi to everybody. I know several of you already. My name is Ashley um, and my website is Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. I'll put that in the chat in case anybody wants to check it out. Um, I'll put my event schedule in there actually. So you can just hop right over to the page that says uh, what my upcoming events are. Um, tonight we're doing breakfast for dinner. This is part of our cook it together program with the Rye Free Reading Room. And um, so we're doing a hollow French toast. And then I've got two different types of strawberry sauces. You can choose one or the other. You can do neither. You can top your French toast however you like. I do not want to tell you how to eat your French toast. Just enjoy it. <laughs> but I'm um, just giving you some options. Um, and if you uh, have any questions while we're going, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, or type in the chat. I'm very, very laid back class, very happy to answer questions, um, or if I'm going too fast or too slow, probably not too slow. I tend to get a little like Gilmore Girlsy with the talking, but um, so, and then our next class with the Rye Free Reading Room um, is Wednesday, May 25th at six, and we're going to be doing a Middle Eastern fatouche salad with homemade pita chips and a sumac vinaigrette, so that's kind of like a, um, kind of like panzanella, but Middle Eastern. So it's um, the toasted pita chips go in with the salad ingredients and it's just really delicious. Um, and I'm excited for that one. It's great for summer. So if you're cooking along with me, I know Jojo for sure is, and I'm not sure if anybody else is. Uh, we're going to do the strawberry sauces first, and I'm going to split mine into two so I can show you how to make both of these. Are you guys going to be making um, a strawberry sauce, Jojo? Or Jojo's mom, I forget your name. Oh yeah, we're making okay. a strawberry sauce with you the doing, basil. You're gonna do the basil one, awesome. So I'm gonna split, I'll tell you the amounts for if you're just doing that one, but I'll tell you, I'm gonna do half and half. That sounds way more confusing than it is. <laughs> but um, the strawberry basil sauce is actually one that, um, I'm just gonna rinse my strawberries while I talk. Uh, it's one that I learned from a chef at this restaurant in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where I grew up. And he made, actually, I'll share the, the full recipe if you want to ever try this. It's crazy good. He made this strawberry shortcake and he used, he made buttered popcorn whipped cream. So we steep, you make popcorn and you steep it in the cream and then you whip it. So good. And then the strawberry basil sauce to go with it. Um, just like something I would have never thought of and the strawberry shortcake the biscuits had corn in them like he was doing a whole farmer's market thing but I thought we could take one of those components and add it to our hollow french toast because that'll be delicious also so that's how I ended up picking that for this so got our rinsed strawberries you can either take your knife and just slice off the end where the greens are and know that strawberry greens are actually edible. You don't have to get rid of them. Um, I don't think they're the most delicious in sauces like this. And then you can slice it. You can cut them into quarters. Basically, we just wanna have some exposed area so that the sugar that we toss in helps everything get juicy. So if you have an egg slicer, like I've got one of these, this is one of my son's favorite jobs, is you, take, you can take the strawberry right on the egg slicer, kind of big strawberry and do that and you'll get beautifully even slices of strawberries. So that's a quick way to do it. You can cut them by hand, um, you know, just with your knife if you'd like. And then if you ever have, this is a strawberry hauler. 
it's like a little it's got a little squeezy button and these little um prongs i guess you could call them so that helps you take just the stem out of the strawberry so you line it up around where the end is and you kind of twist it around and that way it just takes out that middle and the little leaves for the most part and then that's it's just a way to waste a little bit less of your strawberry um so either way either of these sauces you're going to use about a pound package of strawberries i'm going to split mine into two um for the strawberry basil topping you can slice all of them and then we're going to separate some to puree and this is one of my favorite um, things to have a helper in the kitchen if you've got a kid especially it's great because yes like you my helper heard me do you want to <laughs> do you want to come do some of these or no okay the fort building is in very important business over there um so macerated strawberries all that means is we're going to toss if you're doing regular macerated strawberries you just toss them with a little sugar and give them a stir every few minutes and the sugar will help draw out the juices from the strawberries and makes it nice and saucy without really much work um and my grandma used to make that for to put like on top of vanilla ice cream um but it's great like on any sort of breakfast type of item pancakes waffles so i've done about half so i'm gonna leave those in one bowl and actually if you're doing regular macerated strawberries and not the strawberry basil topping once you have the whole pound in there you'll do two tablespoons of granulated sugar so since i'm doing half i'm only gonna do one the strawberry basil topping we, oh that's powdered sugar i don't want that one um the strawberry basil topping you don't have to go back every few minutes and stir it because we're going to puree part of it so i'm just sprinkling that on top and then you'll notice we'll come back and look at it later but like right now it looks kind of just like strawberries with dry sugar you'll start seeing juices build up on the side of here and they'll start getting nice and saucy so i'm going to set those aside and i'm going to do the rest into a different bowl for the strawberry basil sauce and this so the other interesting ingredient he used for this that was in the sauce is a smoked salt um you don't have to use it i put it in there as optional it's just if you happen to have it it's really interesting it looks like it's like grayish brown usually and it, like it smells like you're grilling it's really it's a fun ingredient and we only use a like a pinch of it in here i think he also sprinkled some if i'm not mistaken on the biscuits for that strawberry shortcake um so if it's something you've had in your kitchen you know sometimes it can be hard to find ways to use special ingredients like that so it's a fun fun way to do it how is the uh chopping going over there jojo you get a thumbs up awesome yeah, the egg slicer. I guess why is it called an egg slicer? I use it for mushrooms. You can use it for all sorts of things. Um, it's really versatile. I think when I was a kid, I only ever used it for eggs. And then I don't know what got me to start trying it on other ingredients. And I know <clears throat> this one has kind of sturdier blades. They're kind of like thick instead of the little wires. If you happen to find one like this, um, I got mine on Amazon, but if you happen to find one like this, I feel like it holds up a little better to the, um, I don't want to say abuse. They don't get abused in the kitchen, but they get like kind of, you know, sometimes things are a little tough to cut. So can stand up to a little more pressure, I guess. I'm so right impressed way. by that. The, the, yeah, cutter? I'm so impressed by that. Yeah, it's, um, it's great. It's just with any of the cutters like that, the one thing I'll say is that they're kind of annoying to clean. So like, if you have like a brush, mm -hmm. I feel like if you can do it while it's at least rinse it off while it's still, um, freshly used before anything kind of crusts onto it, mm -hmm. it'll clean a little easier, but yeah, this one, we replaced one of our, the, the other type with the wires probably at this point, 10, 12 years ago. And this one's been going strong. So, um, yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
can't remember if that's one of the ones that I put over here. No. Okay. I have so, a question. Yes. Um, Jojo and I have frozen strawberries. Okay. Um, so are they thawed yet? They're getting there. Okay. Um, so, well, we're going to be pureeing some of them. Are they soft enough to cut yet or no? Yeah, they're cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, yeah, I think you could work with them now because that's going to sit. I'm just, I'm only going to blend this together now because I, the tetrising of my kitchen, I think it'll work a little easier to do that now. Mm -hmm. Um, you, yeah, you're using a blender or a food processor for the other mm -hmm. part. I think yeah. you'll be fine. Yeah. So once you have, um, the sliced strawberries, take a third about, you don't have to be exact, take about a third of them and put them into the bowl of a blender or a food processor. Yours will just be like, almost like a little smoothie until it softens up a little more. So about a third of them. And then we're gonna um, add half of the basil leaves. So you want about a quarter cup of basil leaves. Um, I need to rinse mine off. I was telling Catherine when we started, I had to pick through. I had a kind of sad looking leftover bunch of basil in the fridge, but I managed to find enough good stuff in here. So if, you, if you're measuring it in uh, like a, if you wanna measure it, just kind of lightly pack the leaves and put half of them into the blender or the food processor. And the other half, we're gonna slice um, and add them with the sliced strawberries. So my, my leaves aren't in very good shape. So usually you would kind of stack them and roll them up kind of like a little package and then slice really carefully. Or you could use kitchen scissors and just kind of slice them thinly and those will go into the sliced strawberries. So this is half of the basil. So half of it's getting blended up, half is going in with the uh, puree. Um, normally, if I'm slicing basil for something, I would wait till the very end because it kind of turns brown um, as it sits out once it's been cut. But in this, it doesn't really matter. All right, so we've got um, half of the basil leaves, the strawberries, and then you'll need six tablespoons of granulated sugar. If that's all the same thing as a quarter cup plus two tablespoons, if you're into math. Um, and I'm doing half, so I'm gonna do three. So strawberries, basil, and sugar. And then also, a pinch of this, uh, either regular kosher salt or smoked salt. And a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lime juice. And if you have been to one of my classes that I've used any sort of citrus, you will have seen this before, but I, I can't get over it. It blew my mind the first time I saw it. So if you have a juicer like this, ooh, got a lot of emergency vehicles going by. Um, if you have one of these type of juicers, I always thought that you put the citrus in this way because it kind of mimics the shape of the bowl, but you actually do it this way so that this presses down and it really squeezes all of the juice out. So the round side actually goes up. I'm just gonna measure out. Um, if you're doing this, the full batch, you're gonna do a tablespoon. So I'm doing half a tablespoon for myself. And then I'm gonna throw the rest of this in my glass of seltzer. I also read another tip recently that I thought was interesting. If um, a lot of times, like if I'm not gonna be using the outside of something like the zest or anything, I wouldn't necessarily have washed the outside of the fruit before, but I was reading and it makes a lot of sense that you should even if you're not gonna um, eat it because then you're putting it on your cutting board. So whatever, if anything is hanging out on there, it's getting on your cutting board and it could be getting in your food anyway. I mean, not to 
be scary with it, but just, you know, it doesn't hurt to just give it a quick rinse and then rub it dry with a towel. All right, so. Are you guys ready to blend over there, Jojo? Give me a thumbs up or a, or a thumbs down or a, yeah, okay, cool. So we've got strawberry, basil, sugar, um, okay. And then the salt and the lime juice. You can put the salt and the lime juice in the other mixture if you want, I threw it in here. I'm just gonna puree this until it's smooth. And you might need to, depending if you're using a food processor or a blender, you might need to scrape down the sides a little bit. It's not gonna be super, super smooth. It might look a little bit like, like salsa. And then I'm just gonna scrape all of this. I'm gonna scrape it from the lid too, into the bowl of sliced strawberries and basil. So you got kind of two different textures going on in there. Got that one. It smells really good over here. I feel like, you know, I feel like this would also be great in a um, mocktail or cocktail. Throw a little like uh, seltzer in there. Maybe spike it if you're so inclined and of, of drinking age, but it smells like summer. So just kind of scraping that all into there and then just give it a stir. And this will just be a nice alternate topping for the French toast. So this one already saucy since we pureed some. The other strawberries, I can see them getting a little bit liquidy. I'm gonna give them a stir. And as they sit, they'll just keep getting more and more saucy. So I'm gonna move these. Where am I gonna put them? Tiny kitchen problems. I'm gonna put them over here. Um, and then if you all are ready, we will move on to the French toast portion. Um, if you happen to have, if you wanna serve everybody at once, uh, something that I like to do is get a big sheet pan with, with a wire rack if you have one, you don't need to use it, but I'll put, my oven, I'll put it in my oven on warm if it has a warm setting, otherwise um, just like the lowest temperature it'll go on but most, most ovens have a low. That way, as the French toast comes off of the griddle, we can put it into the oven and so everything is staying warm without overcooking. Um, so everybody can have a hot meal at the same time, which is some days quite a feat. Um, and this French toast recipe is super, super versatile. I've been making it for many, many years. Um, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. We're gonna preheat, you can do this on a griddle or I'll move my camera up like this once I start actually frying them so you can see. But um, you can use a nonstick skillet on your stovetop or a griddle. Um, I'm gonna heat, preheat it while we're mixing the filling to 375 or like a medium, medium high if you're doing a stovetop. Uh, stovetop, you probably don't need to preheat quite yet. The griddle sometimes takes a little bit. And I'm gonna be putting, right before we fry, I'm gonna use some butter um, on my griddle to grease it. If you're using a spray, either is fine. Just look um, like an avocado oil spray or whatever, butter spray. Look at the ingredients and make sure, or I recommend doing one that doesn't include silicone, not because it includes silicone, but because it can get really gummy and make your, um, the edges of your griddle super hard to clean and it will like never come up. It kind of like polymerizes and then it's uh, it's not fun to clean. So that's just a recommendation, not a law. So we're gonna grab a large bowl and gonna add four large eggs. Um, I can't remember the last class that Jojo did with me. I don't remember if we cracked eggs because I can't remember what we cooked together, but I think we did lasagna maybe. Yes, exactly. It okay. was lasagna in the bowl. It was yes. so good. I am so glad. That makes me so happy. Um, 
I'm doing that. I'm doing that class again, actually, with the uh, Asning Library next Tuesday. If you want to make it with me again, you're more than welcome to come. I do. Um, yeah, sure. Send me the link. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the events page. It's in the events page on my website, um, and I'll pop that here again. I have a bunch bunch of classes coming up and I have a couple more I haven't added yet but my tip for cracking eggs a lot of times um, people want to crack it right on the side of the bowl um, instead if you crack it on a flat surface that'll help make it easier to open and the shells don't as easily go in to the egg it's okay if they do we can fish them out but um, my other tip is I I hate doing extra dishes I will avoid it at all costs but for eggs if you've ever gotten a rotten egg in your life it's the grossest thing <laughs> and it'll ruin whatever you're working with. So I always crack it into a bowl, a separate bowl first to make sure the eggs are right and then put it in whatever my batch is. So like if I had a bunch of cake batter in here and I just started cracking eggs directly in, if I had a rotten egg, like I would have ruined the whole batter. In. So that's the one instance where I'm like, you know what, let's do, let's do one extra dish. Um, so yeah, just cracking it on a flat surface. It's a little messy, but it's usually a little easier to manage that way. And if you do get any shells in there, you can use the side of your egg to kind of scoop them out. It kind of is attracted to the eggshell for some reason, but your finger, if you reach your finger in there, the eggshell like jumps away. It's like, nope, nope, you cannot, you cannot scoop me up. I don't want to leave. So we've got four large eggs. Occasionally, depending like how big your um, loaf of challah is, you might need to end up adding another, another egg later or another splash of milk just to kind of stretch the batter, but four usually we'll cut it. So we've got four eggs. We're going to do two thirds of a cup of milk. I grab my milk. Wait, how much did they say? Two thirds, okay. That's gonna go right in with the eggs. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. We used to, whenever there was like a big snowstorm coming, my husband, his office is in Times Square in New York City. He hasn't been in the office really in the last two years, he's been working from home. But whenever he would be there and there was a big snowstorm coming, he would buy a loaf of challah bread from one of the bakeries in Grand Central on his way home so that we could have blizzard French toast. It was always, always very good. Um, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. And that's all there is to the filling. We're just gonna whisk it all together. And I like to take my whisk and pop each of the yolks first. That kind of just helps it whisk together easier. So you just kind of, you can use a fork too. You don't have to use a whisk. Just kind of whisk it until everything is kind of yellow and the cinnamon is all mixed in there. And it'll separate a little bit as it sits, but that's fine. And turn my fan up because I feel that griddle getting hot now. All right. Ashley. Yes. How much milk do we need again? Is it two thirds, two thirds of a cup. And that's all there is, so it should be four eggs, two thirds of a cup of milk, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And then we're gonna slice our challah. Um, I've had some uh, another family in a class before that made this with me. They used brioche, and they said it worked out really, really well. Um, I have not tried that, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> but challah is this beautiful braided bread really good for French toast. Um, and to cut it, we want to get the slices. They don't have to be exactly um, an inch thick, but just try to cut them all about the same thickness. And you can use the end pieces too. That's totally fine. Um, and we're just using a serrated knife. So that's one of these ones with the bumpy edge. Um, if 
if you use a regular knife, which you can, it's just a little easier to squish it. With a serrated knife, you can saw back and forth. So it helps not squish your bread when you're cutting in. So I'm just going to slice this whole loaf about an inch thick. If you end up getting little pieces that fall off, that's totally fine. You can still batter them and fry them and they'll still be delicious. Um, they just might not look quite as pretty. And as soon as you cut into this bread, it smells so good. This is also the kind of French toast that I use. Um, we make Monte Cristo sandwiches. It's like a grilled ham and cheese and then you batter it in like the French toast batter. It's very good and it's got that like sweet and salty thing going for it. All right, so I got a stack of, stack of slices. And once your bread is all sliced, we just have to grease up the grill and then we're ready to fry them. Um, like I said, I'm gonna use some butter. I recommend using um, a non-metal spatula for flipping so that you don't scrape the non-stick coating off of your griddle. But if you don't have one, just be careful with it. And I would say, depending on the size of your griddle or your skillet, um, my, mine has two sides. Mine's one of those ones that folds and you can make like paninis with it and stuff. So about a tablespoon per side on mine, you just kind of want to, let's see, get a little bit of the griddle on there. You just want to kind of get a little layer of butter. I got a little extra here, so I'm going to put it on the other side. This way the griddle will be ready for us and a little bit more. And this is just to really help make sure that it doesn't stick and that we're able to easily flip everything. And then with each slice of challah, I like to put it in on one side, count to five, flip it over, count to five, and then I'll let the extra drip off before I put it onto the griddle. So, if I can, let me, let me pivot this a little bit so you can see a little better. Let's see. A little. All right, should be able to see about half of my griddle now. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it down, two, three, four, five, flip it, two, three, four, five. And then most importantly, so we're not using too much egg mixture, just kind of like hold it vertically, let a little of the extra drip off and then you set it right on your griddle. So just repeat and kind of play Tetris, fill it up as much as you want. You could certainly just do one piece at a time, but it's kind of nice to do a couple at once. The very first time I ever made French toast um, for my dad, I was visiting him and I was so excited because I was like, I learned how to make this at my mom's house and now I'm going to show off like I can cook a meal for him and I was probably like seven somewhere around there and I was like man his stove is really taking forever to make this like the bread so soggy I don't know why it's not cooking and then I realized I did not turn on his stove <laughs> top it was the knobs were so much different than the ones I was used to at my house so it happens, it happens to everybody. And I have done silly things like that, even as somebody who cooks for a living now. Yeah, so you'll see kind of some of the pieces will have a little more of the cinnamon on there. That's totally fine. You'll get like a little bit of the streaks from the eggs. Totally fine. It's all going to make a nice golden crust. I'm able to fit about four, four slices per side. And this is super easy if you ever want to scale it up, if you're having a lot of people, especially if you do the trick with the oven where you have a sheet pan in there kind of waiting with everything warm, you could make, you could just fry up a whole bunch. And this is, it holds up for leftovers. So if you don't manage to eat the entire loaf tonight, you can have it later in the week for breakfast. Get one more in there. 
and you'll kind of see like around the edges it kind of looks like scrambled eggs starting to form around the edge which is basically what it is so we're just gonna let that cook for a few minutes um how long does it usually take about five minutes per side so once it sits for a few minutes, we'll flip. And if it looks nice and golden, that's great. You can always flip it back over if you need to. Um, I'm gonna stir my strawberries again. You can see they're starting to get a little bit of liquid at the bottom of the bowl now, even though they started, oh, forgot I moved my camera. <laughs> a little bit of liquid down there now. And they'll just keep getting juicier. You could probably do this with like, with other types of berries also, you might just wanna mash them up a little bit so that they have that, that exposed part of the, the cut part of the fruit is really what works well with the, um, with the sugar to get nice and juicy. Um, so let's see. Oh, and if you have leftover Easter ham, this is what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna take some, after I fry all these, I'm gonna take some ham that we have left over and I'm gonna throw that on the griddle and warm it up so it'll be like, Little, little protein with all this delicious carbs and sugar. Um, let me see. Get my spatula. We'll see. I feel like this is probably not done yet, but we'll check. Yeah, it's not quite, it's a little bit brown. You can see like some golden bits, but I'll probably end up cooking it more on that first side again. But it's all right. I've already flipped it. Not a big deal. Um, I think I've also seen that you can heat you could heat this up in the air fryer with your leftovers if you have an air fryer it's like a really easy way to just kind of pop one of them one or two pieces in there um all right so next cook it together with the rye free reading room will be next month on may 25th at six and that's the middle eastern patouche salad um it's got lots of it's got like tomatoes and cucumbers um and the pita chips you could totally do the pita chips on the side or only make the pita chips if a big veggie packed salad is not really your thing. Um, if you're gonna join that class and you wanna make the sumac vinaigrette that I make with it, um, that can be found locally if you're, I'm in Ossining, so um, over in like White Plains, Elmsford, there's Yaranoush, it's a med Mediterranean market. And also Shiraz market, that's, um, there's a restaurant, it's a Persian restaurant and a couple doors down there's a market and they have tons of ingredients. You can find it there. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, it's a really interesting spice. It's, if you ever have gone to a Persian restaurant, it's a lot of times sitting on a shaker on the table. So it's this like brown powder. Um, it's kind of a little bit citrusy. I put, I have, um, substitution, like things you can use instead of it. It won't taste quite the same, but it'll still be good if you can't find this or online. Um, a lot of times there's already salt in here. So um, if you use that, it's good sprinkled on like grilled meats. Um, I'm half Persian. I put it on like every everything. When I have a plate of Persian food, I just sprinkle it on all of the things. Here's, this is a good example of nice and nice and golden brown. Um, so that class will be delicious. I hope you join us. And we have, I think we have one other one set for June. And then I'm not doing any classes from classes in July or August because this kitchen gets way too hot. My air conditioner does not reach <laughs> and I'm going to be traveling a little bit. So um, I will be back in the fall for classes. I don't know. I don't think we have anything set up with nice. Rye yet. We should, but. we should, yeah. June 15th, we have Vietnamese fresh spring rolls oh. with shrimp and peanut sauce. Yeah, so that, I'm like, ooh, that does sound good. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I hope so. Um, that recipe so. is very fun for kids to help with. I will show you on that one. I'm glad I asked you about that, Catherine, because I'll show you the other kind of special ingredient that you need for that. I'm just looking in my pantry here, in one of my pantries. Um, so there's a few things. And you can find these at like a, if you have an Asian market, like an H Mart or whatever, but I'm able to find these at Acme Stop and Shop a lot of times. So these are spring roll, they're called spring roll wrappers or rice paper skins. They're um, these super thin, it's a super thin disc. I have it taped shut because I've already used part of it. 
it's super thin. It's a big disc. And when you soak it in water, it gets pliable. So you can wrap it around all sorts of fun ingredients. And if you don't like shrimp, you don't need to use, you don't need to do the shrimp part. You can have any kind of cooked protein. Um, and then these rice noodles, sometimes they're called like bean thread noodles. Um, I don't think I've given Catherine the recipe cards yet, but I will soon, but I put in like what they're called. Um, these are just like super, super thin noodles that you soak and then they're, um, you stuff them in there, but that recipe is very versatile. So if you have different types of veggies that you like, different types of proteins that you like, here's another type rice stick vermicelli. Um, you can use that also. They're just like, some of them you only have to soak, some of them you pour boiling water on, but they get really, really quickly turn into pieable noodles. Um, and that recipe, the peanut sauce is like, so good, <laughs> so good. Um, so I think, Ashley, where yes. did you get those noodles or rice paper? Um, the one you just showed us, is it Etni or H1? Um, that, that's a good question, let's see. This one is, I feel like this brand, I find, I can find at Acne pretty easily. Um, Stop and Shop also, ha I live by Stop and Shop in Austin. They have a pretty good assortment. Um, H Mart for sure would have probably many, many varieties of them to choose from. Um, I, I find that a lot more, there's a lot more access to ethnic ingredients in like standard grocery stores now. You don't have to go to as many specialty places. Um, Whole Foods would probably have it or like a Mrs. Greens. Um, you can order them online if you don't wanna be bothered with, <laughs> with going. Um, my griddle, a lot of times one of them's a little, runs a little bit warmer than the other. So sometimes I reconfigure. Sorry, Ashley, is that yeah. one is rice paper? The other two is what, rice stick? How do you call um, that? So let me, I'll open the recipe while these are frying. I'll open it so I'll let you know exactly what, um, cause you can use either, so let's see. Uh, all right oh I can actually I can send you I'll send you a link this is a link to the recipe on my website this isn't what I'll send Catherine I'll send her like a printable um recipe cards like what I did for today's class but so that is it uses um so it's either rice vermicelli or bean thread noodles whichever um, for the inside and then rice paper rounds are the the round parts that you soak to do the spring rolls those are uh they're fun to make with kids I will say they're a little finicky at first but you'll get the hang of it really quickly um because it sticks to itself but it's like you soak it in cold water and then it just kind of starts coming together and just reminder that the the spring rolls are for June. Yeah, next and month. And then, yeah, next month is the pita salad. What's it called? Yeah, um, fatouche. Ooh. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but. <laughs> um, so I'm just putting my, the ones that are already cooked enough, I'm putting them on my lined baking sheet and I'm gonna pop them back in the oven. And I'll get the other ones on. It smells so good. I feel like the cinnamon just really makes them smell great. Um, I'm curious if 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 Jojo wants to tell me, he doesn't have to, but what kind of toppings other than a strawberry sauce do you like for French toast? Because there's a lot of options. These guys over here. He's coming back. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> What Ashley just asked, what are your favorite toppings on French toast? Yeah, what do you like? Well, syrup, yeah. Yeah, powdered sugar, mm -hmm. chocolate chips. Chocolate chips are good, yeah. You know, I'm thinking of for June, I'm gonna do a kid's class. Oh, I need to put more butter on here. Um, and I was thinking of doing confetti pancakes. So that's pancakes with um, sprinkles. I don't know, but do you like sprinkles? Probably not. Yeah. Do you like sprinkles, Jojo? I love them. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Because for a minute there, I thought maybe kids don't like sprinkles anymore, and then I wouldn't bother. <laughs> but that, that'll be a kid's class. Um, so yeah, sprinkles are fun. Nutella can be fun. Um, if you do, if you want to feel fancy with your maple syrup, 
because sometimes it's nice to feel fancy. You can use a little sifter, um, either they have like special canisters you can buy that have a sifter top, but, um, and if, sorry, if you have regular sandwich bread laying around and you have extra mix, you can totally like do a regular piece of French toast with the same batter, which I might do. Um, so powdered sugar, I, my canister has got a little built-in sifter, but if you sprinkle it with a sifter on top of your French toast, it kind of like makes it snow down. And I'll show you when I put, I'll put some on a plate. Um, it looks really fancy and fun. And also um, the maple syrup, if you, when you have maple syrup that's cold, like out of the refrigerator um, or straight out of the cabinet, it's usually a lot thicker and it looks a little more fun and like drippy. But if you warm it up, so like I've got this little, little pitcher, if you pour the syrup in there and warm it up in the microwave for a few seconds, it's like, you don't have that cold shock of syrup on your French toast. So that can be kind of nice. It does make it thinner though, just so you know, so it pours out a lot faster, um, forming it up. Um, what else do I have? I have some cinnamon sugar left over from something that I made. It's just cinnamon mixed with sugar. Oh, snickerdoodles. We made snickerdoodle cookies with the Austin Library. So that's just that mixed together. That could be good on top of there. I also have some toasted coconut from, uh, I made a carrot cake for Easter. That might be, that might be tasty on there. Ian, would you like to make um, a plate of, of French toast? Can you wash your hands, please? This is, if, if any of you haven't met him, this is my son, Ian. He just completed construction on a pillow fort. It's the second pillow fort ever. <laughs> it feels like I'm in a different dimension. All right. So we're going to do, I'll do these pieces that are out here already for you. And then you can, how many pieces do you want? Three. Three? Okay. That's perfect because three is like just what I got. Would you like to show them a beautiful snowy dusting of powdered sugar? Yeah, let me, sorry. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, little space. All right. That's so, the tiny kitchen. It is the tiny kitchen. So this, you can, can tap it and it just kind of like snows down. Oh. Yeah, it's in there. If you don't have one of those, you could use um, any type of sifter like this or a tea ball just to get a little. Okay, I think that's probably good. Would you like, we've got two different strawberry sauces, strawberry basil sauce or just regular macerated strawberries like you've made with me before so these are macerated strawberries you can see they got nice and juicy you see the amount of liquid down there and shiny so that's just strawberries and sugar and this one has do you want to taste this okay yep oops got it no strawberry peels got basil in it what do you think Ooh, this would actually be good on like a sweet bruschetta. Like maybe, maybe, maybe even with some brie, like a slice of brie. Okay, hang on, I gotta write that down. That's, I think I'll be trying that sometime. <laughs> Ashley, the two, yeah. uh, bread, the two strawberries, one of them is from the blender. One of them is just cutting yes. the quarters and the powder, right? So this one had, um, I blended, oh, here, honey. I didn't make those yet. The one of them um, I blended with, I blended a third of the strawberries and I added um, basil and a little pinch of smoked salt and some lime juice. Um, and both of those are on the recipe cards that I sent um, to Catherine that you got when you registered. Um, and if you didn't get them for some reason, you can just let her know and she'll, she can email that to you. But yeah, the regular strawberry sauce, it's just granulated sugar and sliced strawberries. All right, that is good, sir. Beautiful. Okay. Go, go. All right. <laughs> yeah. So he is good to start eating. Does anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, I'm just going to be. Uh, yeah, you can. You can tell him dinner's ready. Well, tell him like, tell him like a couple minutes because I'm going to heat some ham. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so it's always fun to just kind of do these little remnants and just like see if you had a croissant, I bet like if you just have, if you happen to have a croissant in your house, I do not, but if you did, I feel like that would be really good on here. Um, like soaked in with the juice. I feel like you probably would need to soak it for less time because it's so delicate, but getting a little caramelization on some ham will be good. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, and I hope that if you're making this along with me, or if you're watching the replay and making this later, I hope that you enjoy it. And let me know um, what you think. If you're on social media, you can um, tag me at Big Flavors. I would love to see a picture of what you cook, um, or you can email it back to us. Um, but either way, enjoy. And I'm glad we're sharing a meal together, especially breakfast for dinner, because that's always fun. Looks delicious. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley I Thank have a you question. so much. Yes. So somebody has a question. Oh, why do you have two different kinds of strawberries? Um, didn't don't you I put just, the, the go ahead? Don't you just like the one that with the powder you can do quarters and put in the granulated um, put in sugar in? You just put directly on the French toast, right? Why do you need the one with the blender on? You don't. I just was giving two different options. Um, you can put whatever you whatever you like on there. I just um, you know, macerated strawberries is a it's just strawberries and sugar it's very easy so i wanted to give like a kind of next step kind of different option if you wanted to try something yeah. different mm -hmm. but you also can put the the one put in the blender you meant to put it on the on the french toast too right it's not for something yeah. else right oh, yeah okay. you can the the recipe that it's originally from is one that a chef taught me where he put it on a strawberry shortcake so i figured Either way, it's a, it's similar enough. It just has like a little bit of extra flavor from the basil and the lime. And then if you have smoked salt, um, you could also absolutely, you know, blend in half of the strawberries for just this regular macerated strawberries if you want to, just to do like a, something a little with a little bit different texture. Cause you can see this one is like a little, it's got like finer bits and chunkier bits. So just whatever you prefer or if you want to try something new. All right. Okay. Well, so Ashley, as always, you're the greatest. Thank you. Thank we'll you. See you next month, and thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you, everybody. See you later. Yeah.